As the Los Angeles Lakers wind down one of the most disappointing seasons in franchise history and brace for a consequential summer, that could include major changes to try to return to a championship trajectory. One of those changes might be trading Anthony Davis. I can't control those things, Davis told ESPN after the Lakers lost to the Phoenix Suns, which eliminated LA from play in tournament contention. That's an upstairs thing, a clutch Rich Paul thing, my agency. I mean, my job is to go out and play basketball. Obviously, I love it in LA. If that's something that they're considering, then we'll have a conversation about it. I don't know what they're talking about, what's the plan? Now to be clear, Davis has no indication that the Lakers will trade him. But as a 10-year NBA veteran, he is aware of how the league works. I mean, I don't think they're planning on doing anything with me, he said. I don't know, man. Fuck, I don't know. LA traded for Davis nearly three years ago, sending Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, three first-round picks and two pick swaps to the New Orleans Pelicans for the talented big man. Davis made an immediate impact in his first year with LA, playing 62 of 71 regular season games in the hiatus-shortened season and helping the Lakers to the championship, while finishing second in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Following that title, the Lakers rewarded Davis with a five-year $190 million contract extension. The only problem is AD can't stay healthy. Davis, an eight-time All-Star and four-time All-NBA selection, is aware that his injury history is the only major wart on an otherwise sterling professional resume. My job is to be on the basketball floor and play games, Davis said. When I'm healthy, I'm a motherfucker, but I gotta stay healthy. Unfortunately, it was two injuries I couldn't control this year, but I'll be back at it next year and see what happens. Davis missed 17 straight games from late December until late January after suffering an MCL sprain in his left knee. Then in mid-February, he had the foot injury, causing him to miss 18 straight games. But those injuries, Davis said, do not make him injury prone. Both stemmed from unfortunate circumstances that would have hurt any player. I had no injuries this year where it was, damn, that's 80's fault, Davis said. Someone falls into my leg, sprains my MCL, the same exact thing that Kevin Durant had. It was reminiscent of the instance this season when LeBron James attempted to give and go with Davis and caused the Timberwolves' Jaden McDaniels to fall to the floor and crash into Davis's knee. James used a swim move to get by McDaniels and the Wolves' wing lost his balance. A couple of months later, Davis' second significant injury of the season came when he leaped into the air to catch an off-target lob pass from teammate Malik Monk and landed on a size 20 sneaker of Utah Jazz center Rudy Gobert as he came back down to the floor. And then I fall on someone's foot and twist my ankle really bad. Well, my foot really badly, Davis said. I can't control that. When asked if the extended offseason will allow Davis, 29, to reevaluate his training methods in hopes of staying healthier in the future, the big man pushed back. No, Davis said. To be honest, my training methods were top tier. I can't control stepping on someone's foot, and I can't control someone falling into my leg. It's not like I'm out of shape and I fucking did some crazy shit or it was anything I could control. Davis believes his approach to training has only helped him, not hurt him. The good thing is what people don't know is that the doctors actually told me that you're lucky. Our team doctor said if you weren't doing the work that you were supposed to be doing this summer, both could have been worse, Davis said. I could have fucked up my foot way more, or I could have torn some shit in my knee. So it's a positive for me, knowing that I put in a lot of work this summer and I prevented catastrophic injuries from happening to my body. So people can say what they want to say, but I know what I do every summer to get ready for an 82-game season. It might be risky for the Lakers to keep Davis if he continues his bad luck with injuries. Yes, some of them are not his fault, and there is nothing that he can do about it. But that costs the team, and they can't afford to rely on injury-prone players. No organization can fully control its own fate, especially when it comes to injuries, but it can analyze patterns and actively try to change them. Should the Lakers take control of their own future and put Davis on the market, they could likely fetch a haul that would restock their cupboard with some intriguing draft options, while also getting back either young players or solid veterans who can assist LeBron James in trying for one more championship. Now make no mistake, such a roster would be put together with a ton of duct tape, but moving off of Davis and Westbrook in the right deals could provide Los Angeles with more depth, which has been a need this season. 
And yes, overall, the Lakers would be worse off in terms of raw talent. There's simply no way they get an equal talent level in return for Davis. They might get equal value, but those two things are not the same. At the end of the day, the organization have to ask themselves if the talent level of Davis matters, if the talent rarely makes the floor. Simply put, it might be worth sacrificing a chunk of it if it means having guys come in who play twice as many games as him. Does reliability outweigh elite potential? It's an age-old question, and one that the Lakers will need to find an answer to as they've committed to winning now. Three years ago when they traded for Davis, potentially won out, and it did lead to a championship in 2020. So there isn't one set answer here. Since that championship, however, Davis has been more of a cameo than a featured star, which underlined the fact that things change. What's often best for a team isn't necessarily a path they can walk. This holds especially true for the Lakers, as James played a crucial role in getting Davis to the team in the first place. If he doesn't want the team to trade his teammate, any potential trade conversation is entirely moot. The sheer scale of power James holds over the organization is insurmountable, as James has evolved over the years from being a star to a brand to an icon. Whether he's right or wrong, and he was absolutely wrong in wanting to acquire Westbrook, the Lakers will play to his tune for as long as he's there. Any attempt at downsizing the power level and influence over the most celebrated athlete in the world over the past two decades will lead to a disastrous PR nightmare and potentially severe consequences when it comes to the relationship between the Lakers and clutch sports. Should the Lakers reach the conclusion that Davis needs to be traded but get blocked at every turn by James, they'd also be faced with a very real possibility of Davis's value deteriorating drastically especially if the injury pattern persists. By the time James is either ready to move on from Davis or he leaves to play with his son Bronny elsewhere, the Lakers might not be in an advantageous position to get anything good in return in trade talks. So what exactly is the play here? Well, it could be as simple as sticking with Davis and hoping he eventually stays healthy, in which case the problem solves itself. It's a passive approach with significant risk attached to it for the reasons outlined above. Or it could be applying to James's reason and investing time in making him realize just how handcuffed they all are when Davis isn't playing. How it not only adds more responsibility to James's own plate on the court, but that the longer they stick with Davis, the less they can get on the market. Now make no mistake, this is a delicate situation for a variety of reasons, and it needs to be handled carefully, should the Lakers eventually wish to move on from their star center. So what are some possible Davis trades that could actually go through? Well, here is some realistic suggestions that will benefit the Lakers. AD could be sent off to Atlanta. The Lakers would lose a top 10 player in AD when he's healthy and motivated, and they'd gain three solid rotation players in John Collins, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and DeAndre Hunter, none of whom are all-stars. The Lakers starting lineup would be solid if they made this trade with R. Westbrook, B. Bogdanovich, D. Hunter, L. James, and J. Collins. Solid is the key word. This is undoubtedly a playoff team, but they'd be a massive underdog against the Suns or Warriors in a seven-game series. At this point, making the playoffs next season and giving themselves a chance to make some noise in the NBA's second season might be better than what we've seen this year. AD could also be traded in Phoenix in exchange for DeAndre Ayton and Michael Bridges. So let's start off by saying that the Suns are the title frontrunners this year, and if they do claim the chip, there is no way they'll make this deal. But if Phoenix doesn't make good on their regular season success for the second year in a row, they'd have to jump on this deal. If the Lakers were to make this transaction, they'd get a durable young center in DeAndre Ayton. The Suns' big man doesn't reach 80's peak, but he's dependable, and he's a future all-star. And you could argue that he is a young Rudy Gobert. Michael Bridges would single-handedly turn the Lakers' defense into a top-10 unit. The purple and gold have struggled all season containing the league's plethora of speedy point guards, hemorrhaging points to players like John Morant, Stephen Curry, and Chris Paul. Nobody in the association can shut down the NBA's elite offensive weapons, but Bridges slows them down better than anyone in the league. The Lakers' starting unit of Westbrook, Bridges, Johnson, James, and Ayton would instantly form into a physical and menacing top-five defense that would consistently go out and get stops. The version of the purple and gold could win a title behind LBJ's two-way greatness and their D. There is also an option of a Miami Heat deal, which sends Davis to Miami for Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, and Gabe Vincent. The Lakers have LeBron James, an MVP candidate and the best playmaker in the league. The Heat lack the type of gravity-bending do-it-all player the purple and gold are fortunate enough to have. 
a mix of James, Adebayo, Vincent, Hero, and Westbrook is enough to win a title. The combination of Adebayo, Hero, and Vincent would give the Lakers roughly 50 points per night out of three players who are all 25 years old or younger, infusing LA with youth, hustle, better overall D, and a little I'm not backing down swagger. These are potential AD trade scenarios, but will something even remotely similar happen? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. In any case, we will keep you updated with everything about the Davis trade rumors. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe with the notification bell on to make sure that you never miss our latest uploads.